Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships and this viewer replay courtesy of Blaze Cipher on the NA server. Now he's in the Emile Bartin, the tier 5 French cruiser and this is really good matchmaking. There uh, is uh, a couple of tier 5s on each side but this is a very largely tier 4 match. So for being a, a tier 5 ship being top tier, yeah this is pretty nice. The downside is, however, there are two carriers in the mix, and one of them is apparently a somewhat well-known player on the NA server. Or he said it was something like, they're quite well-known on the subreddit, I don't know. Anyway, you'll figure out which one it is from the chat later on. So, the Emil Bartin itself, um, it's actually a reasonably good ship. It's got a pretty decent range for tier 5. It's, uh, I think, 6-inch guns. Uh, I think it was the tier 4 that had 155 mil guns, if memory serves. Um, but yeah, it's it's fairly standard um, in a lot of ways for its tier. Uh, it's got some nice features, but overall it's there's nothing about it that makes it hugely stand out. And that was my conclusion with the French ships generally, is it feels like Wargaming tried to make a very average line. That they're not super good at any one thing, but they're not super bad in any one particular way either. It's not like, for instance, the Soviet cruisers where horrible mobility, but really fast shell velocities and, uh, you know, pretty good accuracy. Or the Germans where it's really good AP, but fairly weak HE and, uh, you know, good ranges. Um, the biggest sort of standout characteristics of the French are, um, well, really good range for the most part and that shell drag and the shell drag is something you just get useful because uh, useful used to even because you, you look at the, uh, the the muzzle velocities and you think uh, that doesn't seem so bad that actually seems fairly decent and then in practice it feels a lot more like the American cruisers the American six inch guns cruisers so he's gotten the first blood on that rather unfortunate uh, Dane who uh, <laughs> Yeah, the, ar the armor on that is so bad that he, he got citadeled with HE. <laughs> and uh, uh, Blaze Cipher did actually then switch to AP for the uh, the Phoenix, but uh, somebody else blotted that out entirely. Now, he's still firing AP at this point, and you'll notice he's not getting a lot of damage done with it. And I'm not sure if this was intentional, he was just seeing what effect the AP would have. But um, basically, unless you're at really close range and you've got easy broadside access to superstructure shots, um, HE is the way to go. The AP isn't going to do a great deal. I mean, it wouldn't with most six inch gunned cruisers in this particular situation either. Uh, but for this particular six inch gunned cruiser, um, it's going to lose more penetration over that distance because of that shell drag. So, uh, yeah, HE definitely. So you'll note he's got the. Uh, the uh, uh, is it priority target? I can never remember what that captain skill is called. But the one that tells you how many people are aiming at you. I think that one is going to become fairly important in this match at, at various points. But it's just a very useful cruiser skill anyway. When they introduced that as a captain skill, um, that was probably the biggest single buff to cruisers overall that they've given in a while. Because the ability to know whether you're safe or not in terms of how many people are pointing their guns at you uh, that's quite important. That is crucial information a lot of the time, and uh, it's certainly going to prove to be so in this one. So he's repositioning slightly. Um, you'll notice, I mean, he's here with this little group of ships. It's him, the Duguay Trois, and uh, New York. And then there's the two carriers in the south. And then the entire rest of his team is in a blob a little to his south as well. And I want you to kind of pay attention to that blob because uh, uh, Blaze Cipher is mostly going to be up here at least for the first part of this game and you would think that big blob of ships would be able to coordinate fire quite effectively they'd be able to support each other quite effectively you would think but I won't give away too much just yet so he's um, managed to get in some hits on that stationary Enemy Duguay Trua. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but probably not. And uh, although AP 
might have had better results there. At that angle, probably not. I mean, that like HE was the safe choice there, definitely. Uh, I, I think that was the right way to go. You might have noticed, by the way, the uh, the mini map's a bit messed up. Yeah, at the start as well. Um, normally, I have the uh, the team lists on the loading screens, but uh, that just wasn't available in this one. It just loaded straight into the game, pretty much. So this replay was a little bit wonky. Anyway, that's that enemy destroyer that's been up here. That's uh, been a little bit of a concern, but more of a concern is that. Hello, that was a bit close. Um, yeah, okay, that. That that was a bit interesting, but never mind. It's a good thing he slowed down just then. Yeah, with teammates like these, eh? Uh, <laughs> that very, very nearly went very badly wrong. And um, that that other player in the Duguay Trois, uh, yeah, hopefully he at some point learns the value of paying attention to what's around you when dropping torpedoes, because... Otherwise, he's going to turn himself pink and get himself temporarily banned. I'm talking of pink, New York is as well, but uh, that clearly didn't happen in this game. That's uh, from some previous battle. Who knows? So while that New York is taking the attention, and while he knows he isn't being targeted, he can just try and do his best to, uh, to set some fires on this Congo. And because he knows he's not targeted, he can basically sail in a nice straight line right now. So there's another fire, and uh, the first one's already stuck because the, the Congo burned his uh, damage control. So he's now got two fires ticking away. If he can get a third one, that would be even better. And there it is, three fires. So yeah, he's going to be eating away rather large chunks of this Congo's uh, hit points. And uh, well, if he can get a fourth one, that would be even better. If I had to guess, maybe he's got Demo Expert on this. Uh, having gone to tier 5. I don't know, he, he didn't say in his email if he'd free XP to this ship or if he'd played through. And <laughs> there's the fourth fire. Um, yeah, uh, if if he'd played through, I think it would not be unreasonable to assume that he'd gotten a third captain point and gotten demo expert. But maybe he has something else, I don't know. So that Congo is uh, in all kinds of trouble. The fire's should be going out soon, but he doesn't have a lot of health left. There we go, so the fires have been extinguished, um, but he's down to less than 4,000 hit points, so that's only going to take a couple more hits. Uh, the Duguay Chua has moved up and is uh, um, engaging as well, though, as he's the closest, he is taking a little bit of attention, but he's still alive for now. So that's another fire going on the Congo, I think that's the Duguay Chua, yeah, there we go. But uh, the Duguay actually uh, kills him off with shell fire. So, what's next? Well, probably one of these two battleships that are up here. Well, I say up here, they're to the west. I mean, this is an epicenter map, so um, the action's rather concentrated in the middle. Talking of the action and uh, the minimap generally, uh, did you notice what happened to the rest of Blaze Cypher's team? Did you notice where the scores are now at? Yes, um, somehow that huge blob of ships managed to die with very little impact. I think they took down uh, two ships, because the other three ships that have died on the enemy team have died due to uh, Blaze Cypher, the Duguay Chua, and the, uh, the now uh, dead New York. The rest of his team managed to kill only two ships. And one of those was to one of the carriers. So uh, that's not very impressive. And with the scores at now 190 to 820, with the enemy team firmly in control of two thirds of the cap, it's not looking so good. It's really not looking so good. And with the rest of his team effectively dead, I mean, he's now going to be start to, uh, starting to get much more attention from the enemy ships. And there's every chance that he's now going to start having the carriers coming after him. Now he does have a catapult fighter, and I think this is the only tier five uh, carrier, uh, carrier <laughs> tier five cruiser that gets a catapult fighter. But overall, his AA isn't that good. And the French AA generally, it's a bit funny. Some of them do have pretty good DPS values. I was doing my spreadsheet for the uh, 
the Duca d'Osta, and uh, discover that the Lagar Sonnier actually has uh, really good DPS overall for tier 6, but um, the envelope's pretty terrible, and it's the, the large caliber DPS that's, that's really not good. And that seems to be a, a theme of the French generally, is the large caliber AA guns seem to put out really little DPS. And it's exactly the same on the Dunkirk as well, so I think that might be a, a theme, if you like, of the French generally when we get French battleships, uh, is that they will have terrible large caliber long range DPS. So this V170 um, is a little bit of a threat, but with the Hydro going, Blaze Cypher does have uh, sufficient warning here, and also, of course, he can spot this guy in the smoke as well, so he should be able to take him out with relative ease. Now, the V170 didn't just dump his torpedoes all at once, but because he's only got the twin sets, uh, yeah, they're not too difficult to uh, actually have a go at uh, dodging one by one. So that's one less enemy ship to deal with, and there aren't actually that many left overall now. But he has just lost his one remaining allied cruiser, and it's just now him and the remaining Hosho on his team. So this is it, he's going to now get the full brunt of both enemy carriers and the remaining two battleships and this cruiser. So first off, well, we've got to do a little bit of dodging here. There is some good news. With this patch, of course, uh, that is uh, it removed the ability for uh, Tier 4 and Tier 5 carriers to do manual drops. And so dodging these auto drops is a little easier than it might have been if they were skilled players making manual drops previously. His own allied carrier, meanwhile, is taking out the Duguay Truant. He's got in a couple of hits himself, but uh, uh, it looks like... Oh, no, well, I guess those torpedoes... Oh, no, there we go. They were just moving very slowly. The New York, by the way, the enemy New York, I can't figure out... I think he's been AFK pretty much up until this point, which is bad news for the enemy team because um, they just can't quite seem to kill Blaze Cipher here. And they've, they've come down to this. And he's already got a really good damage score. I don't know if you've noticed, but he's now over 100,000 damage, which is really good for a tier 5 cruiser. But he's not done yet. So one set of torpedoes out with a bit of a wonky spread. Um, but if he's lucky, he might get a hit anyway. That's one of the, the ways in which... Oh, there we go. And that's a high caliber, by the way. One of the ways in which the French torps aren't that useful. You still kind of have to use them at, at close range. Most of them are um, triple set launchers, and you you can't control the spread. They they travel forward in a set pattern, but within the confines of that pattern, there can be some interesting variation, and so you can end up with huge gaps. Anyway, so more torp bombers incoming. He's managed to dodge one lot of Wyoming shells and uh, dodging is a good thing because if he'd taken the hits uh, he could well have lost a big chunk of armor. Uh, his torps on this side are back once again. I'm guessing he does have uh, adrenaline rush and well he does take a hit from Wyoming but it turns out he's firing HE anyway. So there we go so much for the Wyoming. Oh, well okay 140k damage it's now two versus three. They are still, however, badly down on points, so he needs to get this cap. He needs to stop them accumulating points. We're also down to the last four minutes or so, or four, four and a half minutes, really. So it's at this point that the New York finally seems to wake up um, after 16 minutes of this game running. This New York finally springs to life. I have no idea what the story is there. Uh, the enemy team don't say anything in the chat about it. Uh, so, who knows. So, with basically nothing else to protect, uh, his carrier is doing his best to uh, cover him with fighters, but I'm guessing by this stage of the battle, yeah, um, nobody probably has any terribly complete squads of ships left. So, uh, He's only got two fighters guarding him right now, plus his own catapult fighter. 
So he puts out Torps on the New York once again. Um, I mean, the fact that they're nine kilometer Torps, um, like most of the time, doesn't really have a bearing, uh, and just because you you don't want to be using it, using them at the max range, generally speaking. Uh, so yeah, he could have put out Torps a lot earlier, but uh, no, I think he did the the sensible thing in. Uh, holding on to them until he was a lot closer, because they're relatively slow and so therefore not that difficult to dodge. Not that this New York is actually trying to dodge. He's already seen that Blaze Cipher has gotten several torpedo kills. Although, having said that, maybe he hasn't. Maybe he just wasn't here at all. Um, but despite... despite in theory, knowing that Blaze Cypher has torpedoes, uh, he gets a bit salty about it in the chat. So that was it. That was the last real threat, and this is just the uh, the epilogue at this point. Um, I've sped this bit up just to save a little bit of time. Uh, I, I did, really didn't have to cut much out of this one. I managed to shave off maybe like two minutes, and I figured this, 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 this little last bit here, uh, it's just him shooting up some carriers. But he is going to get a pretty good chunk of extra damage out of it. So the Ho Show, or not the Ho Show, the uh, what's the tier five carrier there? That was a Ryu Show, wasn't it? Yeah, that that's burnt out, and it's just this Langley left, and it's just pelting him with uh, AP, and it's just a question of well, can he kill him before the carrier makes the drop? And the answer is yes. So that was his seventh and final kill. So that was the first blood to crack an unleashed high caliber and confederate with 226,609 damage. 226k. In a tier 5 cruiser, in a mostly tier 4 game. I haven't seen a result like that in quite a while and it's easier to get that kind of result in a, a, a mid-tier game than a, uh, than a high-tier game. It would be a lot harder to pull off that in a tier 10 game. But that's not to say that this wasn't still a really good game. 3,000 base XP. You don't get that by accident. So, wow. All I can say is Blaze Cypher. That was a hell of a game. That really was. Um, I mean, the 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 Emil Bartan itself obviously had some qualities that made that possible, but um, there are still other tier 5 cruisers that you could conceivably have walked away with the same result in uh, and, uh, and uh, gotten that much damage uh, but I don't know, Blaze Cypher just, he just made it look easy <laughs> he did say in his email that uh, uh, he, he spent the, the, kind of the next half hour after that just winding down, you know, waiting for his hands to stop shaking and the adrenaline to stop flowing and I can understand why, because it's so rarely that you, you do get to have quite that amazing of a result and that amazing of a carry. I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to, I think, sit down and try and figure out what percentage of the enemy team's hit points he actually managed with that 227k. Because it had to be a pretty big percentage. It had to be fairly significant. Uh, so, yeah. I hope you were as entertained by that as I was, because that was that was pretty damn incredible. So, if you enjoyed this uh, OP replay, you can leave any comments about it below. You can hit the like button. You can sub to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, stay tuned for more.